Hello, my name is Martin Goldstraw and I am an addict. I am a heraldry addict. Heraldry, or coats of arms, can be found in almost all our towns and cities, on civic buildings, grand halls, churches and castles, schools and colleges, as well as on commercial buildings from banks to breweries. Coats of arms can be both historical and contemporary and are in fact enduring personal and corporate logos. The vast majority of coats of arms are miniature histories in their own right. Others, like my own, are relatively new. My armorial bearings were granted by the College of Arms as recently as the year 2000. I hope to be able to demonstrate in all of my talks that heraldry is both an art and a science, but above all it is splendidly colourful and can be a visual delight. I have presented many talks to heraldry societies and in the main there's therefore always the assumption that almost without exception my audience has a fair to good grasp of heraldry and a blazon. Blazon is the written description, or if you like, the blueprint by which the arms are described. All armorial bearings must have a blazon. Often in history books, if heraldry is mentioned at all, descriptions of a person's coats of arms are simply recorded in the footnotes as a blazon. As a long-suffering addict, I can visualise in my mind's eye each and every coat of arms described in this written description, but I thought it might be fun for me and hopefully instructional for you to turn the written description of these arms into images, in heraldic language, to M blazon them. Most of these images have been created by me, and although I don't claim to be any kind of heraldic artist, their creation has given me many hours of pleasure. This talk is about Cheshire and Lancashire funeral certificates AD 1600 to 1678, a selection of. In presenting this work to the viewer, I've taken a number of liberties, not least of which is the deliberate omission of the helmet in almost all of the illustrations. Not all armorial achievements have a crest, but where one exists, it is considered to be bad heraldry when the helmet is absent and the crest is forced to float artificially above the shield. I hope that in admitting to this sin I will be forgiven. It saved me many hours of repetitive work and allowed me to more easily bring this task to a conclusion. I also ask the viewer to forgive my treatment of the wreath or torse. Today it is the accepted practice that the wreath will be of the colours. It echoes the principal metal and colours of the shield. But this hasn't always been the case. See examples in the Plantagenet role. And so I've simply emblazoned all of them per the convention of Argent and Ghouls. I hope these minor offences will not spoil the purpose of this talk. Those images that are not my work are either taken from the publication which is the subject of this talk or credited individually. When we talk of English heraldry, the College of Arms in London remains the official body responsible for granting coats of arms and regulating their use in those parts of the United Kingdom outside Scotland, which has its own heraldic authority and is therefore outside the scope of this talk. The collections of the College of Arms contain, as well as all the grant books and pedigrees, most of the original books of the heraldic visitations and volumes of miscellaneous genealogical and antiquarian notes. Their records probably include much otherwise unrecorded heraldic evidence. A significant class of records are the funeral certificates dating from the late 16th to the early 18th century. These accounts of heraldic funerals contain, in addition to heraldry, details of death, burial, marriages, children, and so on. Funeral certificates were taken pursuant to the orders to be observed and kept by the officers of arms made by the high and mighty Prince Thomas, Duke of Norfolk, Earl Marshal of England, anno 1568, the 18th day of July in the 10th year of the reign of Queen Elizabeth, wherein it is ordered that every king of arms, herald or pursuivant shall serve at any funeral, shall bring 
into the library or office of alms a true and certain certificate under the hands of the executors and mourners that shall be present at the said funeral containing the day of the death the place of burial of the person so deceased and also to whom he or she was married what issue they had what years they were of this time at the time of the said burial and whom they were married to the extent that the said certificate may be registered and so remain as a perpetual record in the said office for ever given that elizabeth i was queen of england and ireland from the 17th of november 1558 until her death on the 24th of march 1603 the tenth year of her reign would have been 1568 the funeral certificates in the volume which is the subject of our talk today with the exception of four or five which are engrossed on vellum and preserved in the public records office among the domestic state papers are taken from the three volumes in the british museum viz the lansdowne manuscript 879 harleian manuscript 2041 and harleian manuscript 2180 and are either official copies of the certificates or the original documents signed by the relatives or executors of the deceased the certificates in this collection comprise the whole of the Cheshire and Lancashire funeral certificates contained in the above mentioned manuscripts and extend from the year 1600 to the year 1678. Prefixed to Lansdowne Manuscript 879 and Harleian Manuscript 2041 are documents almost identical signed by William Seeger, Norroy King of Arms, 1st of March 1600 to 1 and Richard St. George, Norroy King of Arms, 20th of May, 1606, appointing Randall Home a Deputy Herald in the following form. In the counties of Chester, Lancashire and North Wales was begun the 8th and 20th day of May, Anno Domini, 1606, in the fourth year of the reign of our Sovereign Lord, King James, by me, Richard St. George, Norrow King of Arms of the North, to be continued by my deputy, Randall Home, resident in the city of Chester, wherein I will that he shall truly enter from time to time the arms and crests, match, issue and decease of all such persons of coat armour and worship, as it shall please God to call out of this transitory life, and shall receive worshipful interment according to their estates and degree and i will also that my said deputy randall home shall in my name and to my use demand and receive of the heirs executors or administrators of every such defunct my due fees as they are severally rated in the next endorse and to make unto me the said norroy a just and true account when and as often as shall be required by myself and upon the finish of this book, that he, the said Randall, my deputy, shall deliver the same, or cause the same to be delivered to me, the said Norroy, to be recorded and entered into His Majesty's Office of Arms in London, according as I am enjoined by oath and order of my office for the benefit of posterity. Signed, Richard St. George, Norroy, King of Arms. And here we see the fees to be demanded and received to my use according to the several degrees following. In premise, or in other words, in the first instance, a knight, 20 shillings, an esquire, 13 shillings and fourpence, a gentleman of coat armour, 6 shillings and eightpence, a citizen buried with the arms of his company, 3 shillings and fourpence, all women to pay according to their husband's degree. Randall Holmes seems to have profitably combined the occupations of herald and undertaker, and his notes give us an insight into the cost of pen and cells, banners, imitation helmets, swords, gauntlets, etc., which were usually displayed at funerals. This bill is not only interesting as showing a comparison of Randall Holmes' prices with those of a Manchester opponent in business, but also being apparently the account for the achievements hung up by Home of Chester at the funeral of Sir Ralph Asherton, Knight and Baronet, which Sir William Dugdale pulled down on the 9th of April 1667 
having ridden over from Manchester mid to Middleton for that express purpose. Home had been found guilty at Stafford Assizes of exceeding his writ, and he had prepared as he had prepared the achievements at heraldic funerals without permission. Dugdale, in what is now considered an act of wanton vandalism, destroyed much of the work of Holmes. And here we see what appears to be the costings for the funeral of Sir Richard Grosvenor, knight and baronet, who died 1645. Details are fully provided in this book as to how funerals should be carried out, and they differ greatly according to the rank of the deceased. Often, because it was witnessed by both the church and an officer of arms, it was used as a vehicle to hand over the rank or role previously held by the deceased to his heir, and great ceremony was made of handing over the seal or the banner or escutcheon of the deceased to his heir. Let us now explore some of the armorial achievements recorded in this volume, usually by nothing more than the blazon, the written description of the arms, but occasionally with a black and white sketch. I have illustrated our small selection in colour. It might be appropriate here to divert slightly to mention quarterings and heraldic cadency. Coats of arms don't belong to whole surnames in England, they are granted to a specific person and then inherited by all of that person's male descendants equally, although they are supposed to be differenced by younger sons with minor marks or bridges to indicate that they are cadets, but this differencing appears to rarely to be, have been taken up and is not even encouraged nowadays by the College of Arms. In English heraldry, an heraldic heiress is a daughter of a deceased man who was entitled to a coat of arms, an armiger, and who carries forward the right to those arms for the benefit of her future male descendants. This carrying forward only applies if she has no brothers or other male relatives alive who would inherit the arms on the death of the holder. A woman is an heiress if she has no brothers or all of her brothers die without sons or daughters. She is an heiress in her issue if she dies having children and the line of her brothers becomes extinct, that is, all brothers and their children have died. This is a very simplified explanation and the subject of armorial inheritance and the inheritance of quarterings could be a topic in its own right. We will also encounter the word impaled. Impalement is where two shields are marshalled together on one shield with the arms of the husband on the dexter, or the left as we look at it, and the arms of the wife's father on the sinister, or the right as we look at it. It's a strange thing, but dexter and sinister are always described as though we are standing behind the shield, so if looked at from the front, the natural way, we would look at the shield, they are reversed. Just take it as a fact. In order to different shields to mark the pecking order of a man's sons, small charges are used to, as marks of cadency in English heraldry. A label of three points is added to indicate the oldest son, who is by his birth an heir apparent. The crescent indicates a second son, the mullet a third son, the martlet a fourth son, the annulet a fifth, fleur de lis a sixth, rose a seventh, the cross maline and a double the eighth and a double quatrefoil the ninth. Any more than that, and if you ask me, the mother deserves to be awarded a medal. This cadency system has never really worked as it has inbuilt flaws, but again, this could well be another topic in its own right. The first of our certificates is that recording the funeral of William Alcock in Holder, died 1606. Here there are no personal arms but those of his company, so presumably the cost of the certification was three shillings and sixpence. On the left I have illustrated the shield as per the blazon on the certificate, azure a chevron per pale and per chevron or and ghouls counterchanged between three gobs of the second. This is the one used throughout the funeral certificates and it's the company of inholders. 
On the right is a photograph of the arms as used today. This version, according to Burke's General Armoury, is azure, a chevron per pale and per chevron gules and argent counterchanged between three garbs or on a chief argent of St. Julian's cross sable and for crest an estoil of 16 points or issuing from clouds in base proper with supporters two horses regardant argent. Note the chevron. In modern use, as illustrated here, it is simply argent, although here it appears to be incorrectly painted as azure. The arms of Edward Allen, a merchant, died 1631. This is a prime example of the recording of dates and relationships as well as an individual's armorial bearings. Arms, per ben sinister, or and sable, six martlets counterchanged, a crescent for different schools. For crest, a martlet or with wings expanded sable, coloured azure, and charged with a crescent for difference. A crescent indicates a second son. And here are the arms of Ralph Allen, an alderman, who died in 1604. These are essentially the same arms as those on the previous slide, difference this time with a torto in fess point. The torto is not a usual form of cadency, so unless this should be an annulet, which is a circular ring, this may well not be a mark of cadency as such, but the imposition of a difference in a new grant of arms. I have not as yet explored this further. These are the same arms of those of the merchant Edward Allen, who by coincidence died in the same year, but they are differenced by a crescent upon a crescent indicating the second son of a second son. Perhaps if we had a family tree in front of us, we might be able to work out the relationship between these Allens. Dame Elizabeth Ashton, 1606. These are the arms of Mannering. Dame Elizabeth was the daughter of Sir Arthur Mannering of Highfield in the county of Salop. The second and third quarters of those of Warren of Eightfield, Shropshire Visitations of 1623, Volume 2. The arms are one and four, argent, two bars gules, a crescent sable for difference two and three, Checky, Argent and Sable, yet another second son. Mrs. Martha Bate, died 1628, arms in a lozenge, ermine on a chief indented gules, three ducal coronets or, a crescent gules charged with a crescent or for difference. These are actually the arms of Leech, Mrs. Bate was the daughter of Henry Leach of Chester, Alderman. Once again we have the differencing for the second son of a second son, illustrated on a lozenge for a female. Edward Batho, Alderman, died 1628. He was graced with his company's arms, viz. the Weaver's Company, azure on a chevron argent between three leopard's faces ducally crowned or, each having in the mouth a shuttle of the last, as many roses, ghouls, barbed and seeded proper. On the right are the arms of the company, and above is the standard. Note that although the funeral certificate blazons the leopards as ducally crowned, the arms as used today have no crowns upon the shield leopard's heads but only upon the head of the leopard's head upon the crest. The Worshipful Company of Weavers is the most ancient of the livery companies in the City of London. It existed in the year 1130 and was perhaps formed earlier. The company received a royal charter in 1155. At present the company retains a connection to textiles through his through its contributions to the textile industry. It has, however, like most other livery companies, evolved into a charitable institution rather than remaining a trade association. 
Mrs. Anne Bailey died 1633. Arms in a lozenge ermine, two bars or over all a lion rampant azure. Note that these are the arms of Bagnall. Mrs. Bailey was the daughter of Sir Henry Bagnall Knight, Marshal of Ireland. The arms of Sir Hugh Beeston Knight died 1626. Arms quarterly of six, one and six argent a bend between six bees volant sable, two argent a chevron between three bucks heads cabossed gules, three argent on a bend gules three escarbuncles or four vert a cross engrailed ermine and five or a saltire sable crest on a mount vert a tower or issuing therefrom an arm embowed in armour proper garnished of the second holding a sword also proper hilt gold sir hugh's estate would have had to have paid twenty shillings for the privilege of this certificate Mrs. Anne Bird, who died 1631. Arms argent across flurry between four martlet schools on a canton azure, a crescent or thereon a martlet for difference. The martlet upon a crescent indicates that the bearer of these arms is a fourth son of a second son. Slide 18. Richard Bird, Gentleman, 1603. Arms again, argent on a cross patouance between four martlet schools, an annulet or a canton azure. Note the annulet indicating a fifth son. Mrs. Alice Birkenhead. Arms meant to be in a lozenge. Quarterly of 15, 1 and 15, argent, 3 chevronels, gules, between as many martlets, sable, a crescent for difference. 2, argent, a chevron, sable, between 3 pellets. 3, azure, a chevron, between 3 garbs, or. 4, gules, a crescent, or, between 3 sank foils, argent. 5, argent, a chevron, per pure, between 3 leopards, faces, sable. 6. Argent a bend engrailed sable in sinister chief and escalop ghouls. 7. Azure a cross cooped the ends flurry argent between four martlets. 8. Argent a lion rampant per pure. 9. Argent a cross raguli ghouls. 10. Argent two bars ghouls in chief three mullets of the second. 11. Azure a chevron between three covered cups or. 12. Sable, three shackle bolts, argent. 13. Vert, three bugle horns, argent, stringed or. And 14. Azure, a lion, rampant, argent. Note, these are the arms of Singleton. Mrs. Birkenhead was the daughter of John Singleton of Steninge, Lancashire. No tincture is stated for the martlets in quarter seven. Here we see the entry for Mrs. Alice Birkenhead. When I emblazoned these arms on the 3rd of August 2017, I wrote a note to myself. The more I play with sketches of these arms, the more I find that the concept of them on a lozenge is silly and utterly impractical. I have no idea whether they were ever actually painted in such a way, or whether this is simply a paper record of the blazon that someone without giving the matter a great deal of thought, decided should be on a lozenge to represent a lady. A simple sketch of the 1, 2, 3, 3, 3, 2, 1 layout with the fields tinctured appropriately looks like a brick wall covered in graffiti. Begin to add charges and ordinaries and I quickly found that the oblong nature of most of the quarters which also have sloping sides makes the addition of ordinaries such as chevrons look horribly distorted and leaves little room for the charges, especially if they happen to be adjacent to one of the sloping sides. Lozenges are awkward enough for single shields. One of 15 quarters is, I have decided, utterly ridiculous. 
I shall note that the original, which has no image, states on a lozenge, but I shall depict the image upon a shield. Peter Bold Esquire, 1605. Arms, quarterly, first and fourth, argent, a griffon passant, sable, charged on the shoulder with a crescent of the field. Second, argent, a fess between in chief three fleur de lis, and in base, a leopard's face, all sable. Third, gules, three cross crosslets, victory, two and one, or a chief of the last. This appears to be an incorrect blazon. The second quarter, that of Warwick, is recorded in the Visitations of Cheshire, 1533 to 1580 and 1613, as gules, a fess, or in chief, three fleur de lis, and in base, a leopard's face, all of the second. Slide. This slide is that of Sir John Booth Knight, who died in 1678. Arms, quarterly of six, one and six, argent, three boars, heads erect and erased sable, two, argent, a fess, engrail, gules, three, azure, two bars, argent, in chief as many mullets of the second, four, bendy of ten, or and azure, five, argent, a mullet, sable, Overall, a crescent for difference, ghouls, another second son. The arms of George Bostock, Esquire, died 1627. Arms quarterly of 16. 1. Sable, a fess, hummity, argent, a crescent for difference, or. 2. Or, a fess, azure. Three quarterly or and ghouls a bendlet sable, four azure three garbs or, five ghouls a chevron argent fretty sable, between three mullets of the second, six ghouls two lions passant argent a label of three points or, seven argent a griffon segriant perfess ghouls and azure, eight vert a bend ermine. 9. Azure, three eagles displayed or. 10. Argent, a scythe sable. 11. Azure, three fishes, their heads meeting in the fess point argent. 12. Vert, a cross engrailed ermine. 13. Argent, a fess gules between three leopards' faces sable. 14. Azure, three standing dishes argent. 15. Argent, a saltire engrailed between four hammers sable. 16. Azure, a lion rampant argent. And for crest, an heraldic antelope argent, a tired, maned and tufted oar, a crescent sable for difference. Mrs. Catherine Bostock, 1632. Arms, quarterly of four, vert, fretty, or, argent, a chief azure, three, or, a lion rampant between three martyrlets, ghouls, and four, ghouls, a chief vert, over all, an eagle, displayed, or. These are the arms of Whitmore of Thurcaston. Mrs. Bostock was the second wife of George Bostock of Churston, previous entry, and was the daughter of John Whitmore of Thurcaston. Richard Bostock Gent died 1630. Arms, quarterly of nine. Sable, a fess homity argent, a mullet or for difference. Two, or a fess azure. Three, quarterly or and ghouls, a bendlet sable. Four, azure three garbs or. Five, ghouls, a chevron argent fretty sable between three mullets of the second. 6. Ghouls, 2 lions, lions, passant, argent, a label of 3 points or. 7. Argent, a griffin, segriant, perfess, ghouls and azure. 8. Vert, a bend, ermine. 9. Argent, on a fess, ghouls, cuttest, wavy, 3 crescents or. And for crest, on the stump of a tree, cooped and eradicated or. A bear's head erased, sable, muzzled or, and charged with a mullet for difference. 
William Bolton Gent died 1629, Argent on the bend engrailed ghouls three leopards' faces of the first, and for crest on a holly bush vert frocked ghouls a hawk with wings expanded Argent. The Arms of Sir John Brereton Knight, 1629. Note the label of three points indicating that the Honourable Sir John Brereton is heir to the Barony of Brereton, the Honourable being the honorific used by the children of barons. John Brereton, Alderman, died 1631, arms quarterly of ten, Argent, Two bars sable, a martlet on a crescent oar for difference. Two, argent, a chevronel between three crescent ghouls. Three, ermine, three mascals ghouls. Four, or a raven sable. Five, argent, an escarbuncle of six raised ghouls. Six, argent, a cross cooped flory sable. Seven, no tincture, a cross ermine. Eight, Azure, a chief ghouls over all the lion rampant or nine ermine two chevronels azure a crescent for difference or ten per pale indented argent and sable crest a bear's head coop sable muzzled or a martlet on a crescent for difference note the differencing on the first quarter and crest indicating the fourth son of a second son Dame Susanna Brereton died 1637, recorded in the funeral certificates as the Lady Susanna Brereton. Argent two bars sable in fest point across. A crescent for difference impaling Argent three bars heads erased and erect sable. This is Brereton of Handforth impaling Booth. Here we have an incomplete blazon for the arms of Brereton of Handforth, however, I have emblazoned these arms according to the blazon recorded for Brereton of Handforth in the Visitations of Cheshire for 1580. Argent, between two bars sable, a cross flory ghouls charged with five bezants, on the upper bar a crescent for difference. Dame Susanna was the daughter of Sir George Booth of Dunham Massey, married to Sir William Brereton of Handforth. She is accorded the honorific of Dame because she was the wife of a baronet. Here are the arms of William, Lord Brereton of Lylin in the county of Carlow. Arms quarterly of twelve coats. Argent, two bars sable. Two, Argent, an escutcheon, an inner escutcheon within a double treasure counter flurry ghouls. Three, or three piles in point ghouls. Four, quarterly, one and four, azure, three guards, or two and three, azure, a wolf's head erased Argent. Five, ghouls, three fions Argent. Six, azure, three garbs or. Seven, azure, a wolf's head erased Argent. Eight, Argent, a cross flurry azure. Nine, Argent, a lion rampant ghouls within an all of fion sable. Ten, or two ravens sable. Eleven, ermine, five chevronels ghouls on a canton of the second, a lion passant or. Twelve, ghouls, two lions passant Argent. A file of three points or crest out of a ducal coronet per pure, a bear's head sable muzzled ghouls garnished or supporters dexter a bear sable muzzled ghouls garnished or sinister a wolf argent collared azure there on three gobs or William Brereton Esquire died sixteen o one quarterly of four. First and fourth grand quarterly. First and fourth grand quarters, Argent, two bars sable, a crescent for difference. Second and third grand quarters, 
argent a chevron between between three crescent gules, over all a, a cross flority gules bezante, second quarter sable and estoil argent, third quarter gules a scythe and sheath argent, crest upon a chapeau azure turned up ermine a dragon gules, breast crest and inside of wings or Mrs. Anne Brerwood, 1630. Ermine, two pallets vary or and azure, on a chief of the third, a bezant between two garbs of the second, impaling, quarterly, one and four, argent, two bars, gules, two and three, azure, three garbs, or. These are the arms of Brerwood, impaling, mannering of Peaver. Robert Brerwood, Mayor of Chester, 1601. Arms, Argent, two pails vary or and azure, on a chief azure, a bezant between two garbs or, and these are the arms of Brerwood. Mrs. Elizabeth Bridgman died 1636. Sable, ten plates, four, three, two, and one, on a chief argent, a lion passant ermines, impaling, azure, a cross patoins, or flory argent, between four mullets, or pierced of the first. Hugh Bromley, Esquire, quarterly of nine, quarterly profess indented gules and ore. The second, azure, two bores, passant, or a canton ermine. Third, argent, on a chevron gules, three byzants within a border, engrailed of the second. Four, argent, on a fest between six fleur-de-lis gules, three cross crosslets, or. Five, gules, three chevronels argent. Six, ermine, a fest gules, fretty, or. And seven, argent, three piles in point sable. 8. Sable, a chevron engrailed between three bull's heads cabossed argent. 9. Argent, on a lion rampant gules between three fions sable, a crescent for difference or. And for crest, a lion's gam erect argent. Sir Richard Brook Knight. And here we have the canting arms. Quarterly, first and fourth, or a cross engrail, per pale gules and sable, second and third, argent, a chevron sable between three box heads, caboss gules, overall a crescent for difference, and the canting crest a brock or badger proper. Valentine Broughton, alderman, died 1603, and these arms are described as the first by the name of Broughton, descended from Kendrick of Rye Walton, ermine, a lion rampant sable, charged with a crescent argent, the second by the name of Sandiff, vert, a lion rampant or, the third by the name of Gruffith ap Kidwin, excuse my pronunciation, I beg you, or a lion rampant azure, langed gules, the fourth by the name of Owain Gwynard, Vert three eagles displayed in fess or in chief a crescent argent. Mrs. Elizabeth Brown arms on a lozenge sable three garbs two and one or within a bordier argent, and these are the arms of Birkenhead of Huxley. Richard Brown, Esquire, died 1624. Argent, two bendlets sable between as many pellets, and crest on a mount vert, a lion sedgent argent, volmed in the shoulder proper. John Bruin, Esquire, 1625. A certificate is dated 12 years after his death. Arms, quarterly, one, argent and eagle displayed sable, Two gules a scythe argent, three argent a fess density between three cross crosslets fitchy sable, four 
sable two bars argent on a canton of the first a garb between four acorns or crest an oak tree eradicated proper dame anne bushel died sixteen thirty four arms quarterly of six one lozenge argent and sable on a bend of the second three crescents of the first two Argent on a chief indented gules three cross crosslets fitch of the first three gules a cock standing on an escalop all or four argent a chevron between three mullets sable five sable three lions passant in bend argent between two bendlets engrailed of the second and six sable a cross flurry between four annulets argent Dame Anne was the daughter of Sir Cotton Gargrave of Nostal. These are the arms of Gargrave of Nostal. Sir George Calverley Knight died 1619 or 20. Arms quarterly of ten coats, argent of fesculs between three calves, passant sable, a canting coat. Two sable on a chevron argent between three cross crosslets or as many sank foils gules three argent on a bend sable nine annulets interlaced by threes or four ermine on a fess gules a crescent or five argent on a saltire sable five swans close of the field a crescent gules for difference six sable two hinds counter trippant in fess argent seven azure a falchion in bend argent hilt or within a borgia engrailed of the last eight argent on a mount vert a buck lodged gules attired and unguled or nine sable a chevron between three bulls heads cabossed argent ten gules a fest density ermine between three bugle horns stringed or the sixth coat being the famous push me pull you coat and crest out of a ducal coronet or a calves head sable ralph calverly esquire quarterly of six one argent a fess gules between three calves passant sable two sable on a chevron argent between three cross crosses or as many sank foils gules three argent on a bend sable nine annulets interlaced by threes or four ermine on a cross on a fess gules a crescent or five argent on a saltire sable five swans close of the first a crescent for difference six sable two hinds counter trippant in fess argent a crescent gules for difference the whole six quarterings within a borgia engrailed or ralph calverley died in 1619 was filius naturalis of anthony calverley second brother of sir hugh calverley of lee hall sir george of the preceding slide was the oldest son of sir hugh John Calverley Esquire died 1629. Quarterly of six, one argent of fess gules between three cars passant sable, sable on a chevron argent between three cross crosslets or as many sank foils gules, argent on a bend sable nine annulets interlaced by threes or, ermine on a fess gules a crescent for difference or, Argent on a saltire sable, five swans close of the first, a crescent gules for difference, and sable two hinds counter trippant argent. Over all, a crescent gules for difference, the whole six quarterings within a bordier engrailed or. Crest out of a ducal coronet or, a calf's head sable, collared with a fess engrailed of the first, a crescent for difference. John was the son of Ralph of the preceding slide, and therefore, although he carries the Borgia engrailed indicating illegitimacy, he himself is not illegitimate. Perhaps it would be better or more polite to say that the Borgia engrailed doesn't so much indicate illegitimacy as simply a line of descent which cannot inherit the estate. 
and here grouped together are the arms of George, Ralph and John. The arms of Ralph and John carry the Borgia engrailed, indicating illegitimacy. Ralph Calverley died 1619, as we've discovered, was Phileas Naturalist of Anthony Calverley, second brother of Sir Hugh Calverley of Lee Hall. Sir George was the eldest son of Sir Hugh. John, being the son of Ralph, was not himself illegitimate. It's not unusual when researching anything heraldic to come across possible errors which provide a conundrum and when emblazoning a few more images for the Lancashire and Cheshire Funeral Certificates project I completed those of Mr Thomas Case died 1634 and his daughter Mary Coney also died 1634-5. The arms of the father were recorded as argent on a Ben Gould's Catisse sable three round buckles or and one would expect his daughter, when displaying her paternal arms, to display an identical achievement. It seems, however, if we can take the records of the certificates as accurate, and I'm not at all sure that we can, that she had a slightly different version, displaying the bend gules as a bend engrailed gules. Given that both certificates were completed by Randall Home at Chester, the one for the father on the 26th of August 1634, and the one for the daughter the following 26th of January 1634-5. Can we assume that it was not an error? Is it an error in transcription from the original? Burke's General Armoury records the arms of Case of Red Hazels, County Lancaster and Thingwall Hall near Liverpool as Argent on a bend en engrailed Gould's Catiste Sable three round buckles or so it may well be that it was either a transcription error or Randall Holm recorded it incorrectly. In addition, although the tinctures of the sleeve is missing in the certificates record, Burke records the crest as a cubic arm habited ermine cuff argent holding in the hand proper a round buckle or although the likelihood is that the arms of the father have been recorded incorrectly I have nevertheless emblazoned both images according to the record published by John Paul Rylands in 1882. Dame Mary Chumley died 1625. Arms quarterly of six in a lozenge. One argent a greyhound passant sable. Two Argent a chevron between three text T's sable. Three, argent three bull's heads kibosh sable. Four, argent a boar passant sable. Five, argent two bars ghouls. And six, azure, three gods or. These are the arms of Holford of Holford. She was the daughter and sole heir to Christopher Holford of Holford. William Crompton, Alderman, 1675. The arms of Crompton, quarterly, one and four, argent on a chief vert, three fions or. Two and three, argent, three bars wavy as your, over all a tower triple towered of the first. Over all quor four quarterings, a crescent for difference. And for crest, out of a mural crown, gules, a seahorse's head or maned argent. Hugh Davenport, gentlemen. Arms argent on a chevron between three crossed crosslets pitchy sable, a rose of the field, a crescent or on a crescent gules for difference. Another second son of a second son. William Dodd, gentlemen. Arms argent on a fess gules between two bars nebulae sable, three crescents or, in chief a cross malign of the third. These, this includes one of the few illustrations in the manuscript. Sir Richard Edgerton, knight, died 1628. Arms quarterly of nine, argent a lion rampant gules between three fee and sable, charged with a crescent for difference or. Two or three piles in point gules on a canton argent, a griffin segrian sable, a label of three points azure. 
3. Ghouls across ermine within a Borgia Argent. 4. Argent a fess vary or and ghouls between three water barges sable, a mullet for difference. And 5. Vary argent and sable. 6. Sable a lion rampant argent. 7. Argent three bendlets, possibly enhanced. Ghouls. 8. Argent on a bend azure three annulets or and nine argent a greyhound passant sable a mullet for difference of the same and for crest a lion's gamirect gules holding a sword argent hilt or matthew ellis of overley gent died 1613 here we have an incomplete blazon arms no tincture given on a chevron between three maidens heads cooped as many something flowers on a chief again no tinctures a cross pate between two roses a note stating that though this coat was made then it was mistaken for his right coat by descent which is or a lion rampant blue i have indicated the arms recorded in the certificate as a black and white image as though mention as though because there is no mention of the tinctures I have also illustrated a coat or a lion rampant blue, or more properly azure. To complicate matters even further, Burke's General Armoury records the arms of Ellis of Overley Chester as ermine a lion rampant azure, crest a female a fronte proper, cooped at the waist, habited ghouls, crined or. However, the 1613 visitations record Ellis of Overley in the city of Chester as pedigree shown but no arms recorded. Mrs Anne Fitton Arms required to be in a lozenge Quarterly one and four Argent on a bend as your three gobs or Two sable a sling or hand bow bendwise between two fians argent, three argent three bendless schools over all four a martlet for difference or. In quarter two we see the strange hand bow, which is, as far as I am aware, unique to the arms of Cardan or Carwardine, sable a sling between two fians argent. Mrs. Agnes Fletcher died 1601. Argent, three bears' heads, erased ghouls, muzzled ore, in chief as many pellets, a crescent azure in the fest point for difference. These are the arms of her father, William Wall, alderman. And these are the arms of Andrew Gamel, alderman, died 1626. Arms quarterly of six, one and six, or three mallets, sable. Two, sable, a mullet, or between three leopard's heads, jessant de lee, argent. Three, azure, a fest density, argent, in chief, three escalops of the second. Four, ghouls, three boar's heads, cooped, argent. Five, Azure, an estoil issuing from a crescent argent, overall a crescent sable on a mullet or for difference, and crest, out of a ducal coronet or, a trefoil of the same, between two wings expanded sable, a crescent or on a mullet sable for difference. If we remind ourselves of the methods of cadency, we'll discover that Mr. Gamel, a gavel, considered to be a punning coat, was the second son of a third son, and we will also notice that the second quarter denotes the arms of a third son. Mrs Mary Gamel died 1631. Arms quarterly of 18. 1 and 18, Argent on a Chief Ghouls, 3 sank foils of the first. 2, Argent on a Ben Sable, 3 round buckles of the first. 
3. Gould's a chevron between three lozenges argent. 4. Urban on a saltire azure, five fleur de lis or. 5. Azure, a garb all, a crescent for difference gold. 6. A sable, a, clos, a cross flory argent. 7. Azure, three pheasants or. 8. Quarterly argent and sable, a cross flory counterchanged. 9. Vert, three stumps of trees cooped and eradicated argent. 10. Argent, a bent sable between three pellets. 11. Azure, an eagle displayed argent. 12. Ghouls, three swords erect, two and one argent, hilts or. 13. Or, six eagles displayed, three, two and one sable, a canton ermine. 14. Argent, three birds, ghouls. 15. Sable, three owls or. 16. Azure, two bars, argent. And 17. Or, a fess, azure. These are the arms of Bello of Morton. Mrs. Dorothy Goldborn died 1631. Arms in a lozenge, again, quarterly one and four, sable three garbs or within a border argent, two and three ermine on a bend cutty schools, three crescents or, all four quarterings within a border and grail gobony or and sable. These are the arms of Richard Birkenhead. The observant amongst you will notice that I have not emblazoned this in a lozenge. Mrs. Dorothy Green died 1601. She bore Argent, a chevron between three cross crosslets, Fitchy Sable, one difference by a crescent by the name of Davenport. Impaled with her said husband, viz. Ghouls a lion rampant, perfess, argent and sable, crowned or langed azure, charged on the shoulder with a trefoil vert. Edward Green, gentleman, died 1631, quarterly one and four, azure, three box trippant or, on a chief of the second, a crescent for difference. Two and three, argent on a fess sable, three mullets of the first, pierced of the second. Mr. John Hare died 1634. Ghouls, two bars and a chief indented or, a mullet, gold, on a crescent sable for difference. Mrs. Martha Harper, daughter and heir to Thomas Brabant. Argent, a line rampant within a bordier engrailed sable, a crescent for difference, impaling argent on a fess hummity ghouls, three leopards' faces or a crescent for difference sable. Mrs. Margaret Harvey died 1628, daughter of Thomas Anion. Here are the arms of her husband. She was graced with her husband, husband's arms upon her corpse. Arms quarterly, one and four. Ghouls on a bend argent, three trefoils vert, a mullet or for difference. Two and three, sable on a chevron between three bull's heads, caboss argent, a crescent of the first for difference. Over all four quarterings, a crescent or for difference. Clement Hicks, gentleman, died 1627. Ghouls on a fess wavy between fleur, three fleur de lis or a mullet for difference sable. Thomas Ince died 1626. Argent, three torto in bend between two bendlets sable, a mullet of the last charged with a martlet of the first for difference. I bring this one to your attention, not because it has any heraldic interest, but because it may be interpreted, in my humble opinion, in one of two ways. Here we see 
a funeral certificate of Robert King, a doctor of divinity, who has one son who is a graduate of Bracenose College of Oxford. One might therefore assume that it is a learned household. Note, however, that Dr. King's wife, Alice King, has, in witnessing the accuracy of the certificate, signed with her mark, not a signature. Was Alice simply too old, or perhaps too infirm, to sign and so made her mark? Or was it perhaps the case that even though Alice married a learned man, she herself was illiterate? Illiteracy was not then uncommon, and history has not shown itself to be too kind to the gentle sex. In the 16th century, when Alice was a young girl, it wasn't always thought necessary or expedient to educate the girls of the family. Whether this is the case or not here, we'll probably never know, but let us at least be thankful that today we are at least making inroads, even if seemingly too slow, into equality of the sexes. Back upon safer ground, here are the arms of George Ledsham, gentleman, died 1606. Arms quarterly, sable and argent, four leopards' faces counterchanged. In the fest point, a mullet or. And the arms of Sir Richard Lee of Lee Knight, died 1627. Quarterly of six, one argent a fest between three leopards' faces sable, two Sable two bars argent on a canton of the first a garb or three profess or and gules a wyvern counterchanged four or two bars passant sable five gules on a bent cotiste argent three more cocks sable combed etc of the first and six azure an eagle displayed argent and for crest on a ducal coronet or a leopard's face sable. Note that here the pronominal coat, that of Lee of Lee, is recorded as argent a fest between three leopards faces sable. This is not how the arms are recorded elsewhere. Here are the arms of Lee of Lee as recorded in the visitations of 1613 and 1663. Here again they are recorded differently. The visitations of 1613 give Lee of Lee Thomas Lee, Argent, a chevron engrailed between three leopards' faces, sable. In the visitations of 1663, Lee of Darnhall are given as quarterly, one, Argent, a chevron between three leopards' faces, sable, for Lee. Sable, a scythe in bend, sinister Argent, again for Lee. Three, Sable, two bars Argent on a canton of the first, a garb or for weaver, and four, or a chevron between three tall cro tau crosses azure, no name given. Crest on a ducal coronet or a leopard's face sable. Here we see the arms of Lee of Lee impaling on those of John Booth of Barton in the county of Lancaster, and here they represent the arms of Mrs. Anne Lee died 1601. Lee beareth argent a lion rampant gules, two azure crucially botany, three eagles or, the third coat argent a griffin gules a crescent argent for difference, and the fourth as of the first, and she bears Argent, three boars, heads, erased, sable, langed gules, tusked or quartered with argent, a fess, engrailed gules. This is the record of Thomas Lee, Esquire, who died in 1602. The first of the field, azure, two bars, argent, a bend, gobony, or, and gules. The second, azure, a chevron between three crowns, or. The third, gules, a chief, and three crosses, botany, fitchy, or. The fourth, argent, a cross, formy, fitchy, at all points, sable. And the crest, on a torse, argent, and azure, a unicorn's head, cooped, argent, the main, or, 
horn, gobony oar and gules. And here are those arms illustrated in colour. Moving on to the next slide, we have those of Humphrey Lloyd Alderman, who died 1623-4. Arms, quarterly of eight. Argent, a cross engrailed, the ends flurry sable, between four Cornish chuffs proper. Two, or a lion passant god and ghouls. Three, azure, three fishes, their heads towards the fest point argent. Four, sable, a chevron, between three goats' heads erased or. Five, argent, a rose ghouls, barbed and seeded proper. Six, sable, a lion rampant argent. Seven, per pale, azure and sable, three fleur de lis or. Eight, sable, three nags' heads erased argent. Over the whole, a martlet for difference. The martlet, of course, indicating a fourth son. Thomas Lineal Alderman died 1603. This entry includes a small black and white drawing of the arms. Azure on a bend argent, three crosses patois sable. On a chief oar, a trefoil slipped of the third between two garbs of the first. Henry Mannering, Esquire, died 1638. Quarterly of one and four, Argent, two bars ghouls, two and three, as your three garbs all. Over a, overall, a mullet for difference, and crest out of a ducal coronet or an ass's head proper, a mullet for difference. And these are the arms of Edward Martin, alias Duckinfield, gentleman, who died in 1604. These are the arms of Duckinfield of Duckinfield Hall, County Chester, Baronet, Argent, a cross voided pointed sable, with the fleur de lis added for difference. However, this is apparently not a mark of cadency, but a charge added to the field to denote the change of surname from Duckinfield to Martin. John Massey, gentlemen, died circa 1631. Arms quarterly of ghouls and ore. In each of the first and fourth quarters, three fleur de lis argent, a crescent for different sable, and a label of three points as the eldest son. Note the label of three points, indicating that at the time of his death, he was the heir to his father, the crescent denoting that his father was the second son or of the line of a second son. Ralph Moore, gentlemen, died 1626. Arms, quarterly one and four, ermine, a fess ghouls between six moorcock sable, two and three ghouls on a bent cutiste argent, three birds sable, legged of the first, and for crest, a moorcock with wings expanded proper. The moorcocks are, of course, a pun on the surname, although adding black moorcocks to a field of ermine is not entirely successful from a visual point of view. Mrs Judith Pindar died 1639. Argent is chevron and grail between three griffins heads erased azure, beaked oar, on a chief of the second and anchor erect of the third between two bezants. These are the arms of her father, Thomas Walkenden. Thomas Powell Esquire died 1629, quarterly of nine, one, sable, three roses argent, barbed and seeded proper, two, azure a lion rampant oar, three, azure a fess oar between three nags heads erased argent, four, azure a lion statant gardant oar, five, ermine a lion rampant azure, six, ghouls, three chevronels argent, 7. Vert, a lion rampant or. 8. Or, 6 annulets, 3, 2 and 1, sable. 9. Argent, on a chevron between 3 birds, cormorants, sable, beaked or, 
a mullet of the last for difference, crest. In the ducal coronet gules, a bear's head argent pierced through the cheek with two javelins in saltire, staves of the first, points of the second, embrued proper. Embrued means bloody. Mrs. Anne Rathbone died 1604. These are the arms of the merchant adventurers of the old trade or Hambra merchants, according to Papworth's page 563. Azure three bars wavy argent, a chief quarterly gules and ore, in the first and fourth quarters a lion passant gardent of the fourth, and in the second and third quarters two roses of the third, seeded gold, tufted vert. Roger Ravenscroft, M.A., died 1635. Arms, quarterly of six. One, argent, a chevron between three ravens, heads erased sable. Two, azure, a lion rampant gardent within an all a fleur-de-lis argent. Three, argent, three bulls' heads erased sable, armed or. Four, sable, three garbs or a borgia of the second. 5. No tincture for the field, on a bend vert three spades argent. 6. Azure, a chevron between three dolphins hurient embowed argent, those in chief respecting each other. Over all, a martlet for difference. Crest, on a chapeau gules turned up ermine, a lion statant guarded argent, charged with a martlet for difference. Note that I have depicted the martlet on the shield as gules, red, and the one on the crest as azure, blue. There's no set rule as to what colour marks a cadence uh, should be. It would be perfectly all right to depict them in different colours, and it's best to choose a colour that shows up best on whatever background it has to sit upon. Mrs. Barbara Stoffard died 1631. These are the arms of her father, Thomas Twisden of Wye, to whom she was co-heir with her sisters. Note the crescent indicating that her father was a second son. Per sultire argent and gules, a sultire between four crosses crosslets, all counterchanged. I'm not ordinarily a fan of lozenges because, as I indicated earlier, most arms don't translate well into them. However, in this instance, the result is rather pleasingly balanced. Here are the arms of the previous lady's husband, Thomas Stofford, Chancellor of the Diocese of Chester, <clears throat> who died in 1633, two short years after the death of his wife, Barbara. Arms, quarterly one and four, argent, two grossing irons in saltire sable, between four pairs proper. Two, sable, three lions rampant argent. Three, argent, a bend ermines, between two lions rampant sable. Over the whole, a label of three points ghouls. The addition of the label would indicate that he died in his father's lifetime. His two-year-old son, John, would have then become the bearer of these arms, with the label in use during the lifetime of his grandfather. As a grandson, while his father was still alive, he would have been able to display a label of five points, indicating that he was the heir apparent of the heir apparent. Thomas Venables, Esquire, Baron of Kinderton, died 1605. Quarterly of six, first, azure, two bars argent, venables, second, argent, three piles wavy, issuant from chief sable, third, argent, a cross patouance between four martlets ghouls, fourth, vert, a dragon argent, fifth, argent, a bend sable between three pellets, six, azure, an eagle displayed argent. Sir Peter Warburton Knight, Judge of Common Pleas, died 1621. Arms, quarterly, one and four, quarterly argent and gules, in the first quarter an ermine spot, and in the second and third a fret or. Overall, a crescent sable for difference. 
2. Argent, a chevron, between three cormorants, sable. 3. Argent, two chevrons, gules, on a canton of the second, a mullet, or. Over the four quarterings, a martlet, gules, for difference. Crest, a saracen's head, a fronte, cooped at the shoulders proper, wreathed about the temples argent and azure, issuing therefrom three ostrich feathers of the second, a martlet sable for difference. Ralph Wilbraham Esquire died 1628. Arms, quarterly one and four, bendy wavy of six, argent and azure, two azure, two bars argent, on a canton sable, a wolf's head erased of the second, Three argent across flurry between four martlet schools, a label of three points azure, over the whole a mullet on a crescent for difference. Crest a wolf's head erased argent, charged with a mullet on a crescent for difference. I like the note that he paid only thirteen shillings and sixpence fee, but had nothing done by us. In other words, he paid for his certificate and nothing else. There were no heraldic funeral trappings. Thomas Wright, felt maker, died 1631. These arms are those of the Haberdashers Company, Bari Nebulae of six, Argent and Azure, on a Ben Gould's, a lion passant, guardant or. Mr. Godfrey Wynne, alderman, died 1629. Arms, sable a chevron between three goats' heads erased or, with the rather caustic footnote he had a bastard. You may recall the rather more accepting or genteel way in which we saw Ralph Calverley, died 1619, was described as filius naturalis of Anthony Calverley. Not quite as harsh a description, but then again Mr Calverley had just paid the college arms for a new grant of arms. Leonard Ashaw Esquire died 1633. Arms Argent on a chevron between three martlets vert, as many crosses formi fitchi of the first. Humphrey Booth, gentlemen, 1635. Arms Argent, three boar's heads erased and erect sable, a crescent gules charged with another crescent, or for difference. Yet another second son of a second son. Thomas Ireland, Esquire, died 1639. Arms quarterly. 1. Gules, 6 fleur de lis, 3, 2 and 1 argent. 2. Argent on a Ben Sable, 3 gobs or. 3. Azure, see me de lis, and a lion rampant guardant argent. 4. Gules, a bend or. 5. Argent, a bend engrailed sable between 6 fleur de lis gules. 6. Argent, three bendlets azure. Over all six quarterings, a crescent on a crescent for difference. Crest. A dove with an olive branch, all proper, with a like difference as in the arms. We have seen but a selection of the arms, but it's given us the opportunity to explore blazon, cadency and marshalling, i.e. impalement and quarterings. Many more illustrations in full colour can be found on my Cheshire Heraldry website and they are regularly being added to. The Cheshire and Lancashire Funeral Certificates is but one of a number of facsimile books and original publications produced under the Cheshire Heraldry and Heraldry Addict brands. Visit Cheshire Heraldry or rather cheshire-heraldry.org.uk forward slash publications and click on Authors Spotlight. For my other videos, just search Heraldry Addict in either Google or YouTube. In the words of the late great journalist Alistair Cook, if you have been, thanks for listening.